The following program is being paid for by Creflo Dollar Ministries. I'm a world changer. Let's join Dr. Creflo Dollar for today's message. Psalm 73. Let's look at verse 12. Let's read verse 12 out loud together. Read it. Read. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Now the Amplified says, Behold, these are the ungodly who always prosper and are at ease in the world. They increase in riches. Now there is here a, a, a verse of scripture that lets us know that there is prosperity in the world. I'm not talking about that. My sessions all year long will not be about that. I am hungry to prove to this world that the kingdom has more to offer than the world. But we got to learn how to tap into it, you see. Now, unfortunately, according to this scripture right here, unfortunately, that's the kind of prosperity that most of us are familiar with. The prosperity that comes from the world. That's that's we're we're we've grown up on that. Now, all of our lives, we've seen people lie. And cheat and steal their way to wealth. Hmm? And so much so, in fact, that many people have the mistaken idea that riches themselves belong to the devil. Because they've seen cheating and lying and then they think well I don't really want to have anything to do with money because I've seen how people obtain it you follow me and so we think that riches themselves belong to the devil we think that money is part of Satan's domain money is viewed as contaminated as something that belongs to to the devil now i told you about this interview i had recently and i said in this interview i said uh you don't have any problems with the sports guys having money you don't have any problems with the uh entertainers and the singers and the rap singers have money but when it comes to christians having money then why is it that you have problems and the guy said because you're a preacher you preach the word of god and you should know better and I said, and the word of God says, the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. That's what you don't know. But now here's the deal. I saw from a worldly point of view. In his mind, money's contaminated. It's only supposed to be in the hands of those who lie and cheat and manipulate to get it. And that's not right. So in his mind, he was saying, you're a preacher. You're not supposed to have that which is a part of Satan's domain. Mm -mm. Now listen to me carefully. So we just go to Haggai. So in light of that, we just backed up. And we just let him have it. We just backed up and said, oh, well, you know. <laughs> I guess it's his. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to read something that's going to let you understand whose domain money is, is in. Haggai chapter 2 verse 8. <clears throat> read verse 8 out loud together. Ready to read. The silver is mine and the gold is mine. So the silver and gold belongs to who? God. Who? God. God and not the devil. The devil. But, but you, you see, we, 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 we've thought that money's contaminated and that it belongs to the, the devil and it's in Satan's domain. And Christian people ought to be ashamed for having it. And Bible says, listen, God said that the silver is mine and the gold is mine. Poverty is not the creation of God. Poverty is the creation of the devil. There was no such thing as poverty and lack until Satan showed up in the garden and the first thing went lacking was clothes. It's not, poverty is not even a creation by God. <clears throat> but money, if anybody should have it, Come on. Come on. 
Your daddy said it's mine. It's not the devil's. And as long as you go around thinking it's the devil's domain, then you just let him have it. Because after all, we're Christian people, and, and, and money's evil, and it's the devil. You see, how, you see how wrong that is? Just by not reading the Bible. The silver and the gold is mine. Hallelujah. And since he's my daddy, and I got a covenant with him, me too. I am not going to let every sinner in the world live their life enjoying what's mine. Riding around in a limo, that's mine. That limo crying out, get this sinner out of me. Please get this sinner out of me. I don't belong to them. I belong to the righteousness of God. Glory, 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 glory. The Lord wants this in the hands of his children. Can I read? Let's read that again. Let's read that. Let's read that again. Please, one more time. Let's just start at verse. Let's just start at verse six. Let's, let's start there. Ready to read. For thus said the Lord of hosts. Yea, once it is a little while, and I'll shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver, God says, is mine. The gold is mine. I need you to see that. Because unbelievers don't think God own it. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and what? And the silver and the gold belongs to him. Hallelujah. Why we're there, let's look at Proverbs 13, 22. Excuse me why I talk like I'm from the south. I've been doggone if I'm going to find out something belonged to me and not pursue it. And that's what the enemy has been after. He's been after you pursuing it. Look at Proverbs 13, 22. If we're not living a life walking in the love of God, if we're not living a life walking in, the, uh, in, in forgiveness and, and, and walking away from strife, it, it, you know, principles without character can't work. Character determines how far you go in this thing. Verse 22, let's read it out loud, ready to read. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the of the is for who? For who? For who? All right, it's you, if you're just, I don't know if you're just or not, but it's, it's laid up for the, for the what? For the just. For, don't get to me first, because you might be doing something unjust. It's laid up for who? The just. I don't know you, so, you know, you, you, you believe, but you got to be if you're just. Now, if you're just, say me. Okay, so the, the wealth of the sinner is being, it's, it's laid up. He don't even know what to do with it. It's laid up for who? The, the question I want to ask you is, it, does it appear that this scripture intends for wealth to be in your hands? Because he says what? The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So you really, in, in, in all, here's what he's saying here. There's some rich man holding what belongs to you. Uh, is that what it's, please help me. I, I'm not a scholar or none, but I can read. And it says the wealth of the sinner is laid up. Look, look, look at the intent of the sinner's wealth. Look at, it, it is as if. The sinner's wealth has a calling on it. It's already been tagged for use. <sighs> the sinner working hard trying to get it. And if, and if he don't become saved, all he's doing is working for me. He's working for me.